Undiplomatic is an unscripted and unfiltered podcast hosted by Zulf Hayek Khan that will explore the intersection of business, politics and culture in Slovakia with a host of high-level guests across the spectrum telling their stories. How do you see the future of Slovakia in the next four years in this cycle? And where do you want Slovakia to be? You're very passionate about your country, I can see. To be honest with you, I really want Slovakia to keep up with the European Union. Mm -hmm. Like, if you look at the rank, we are the second from the bottom. I really want to, you know, keep up with the biggest and strongest countries in European Union. I don't care if someone wants to marry someone else and live together. I don't want to hear about it every day. But I'm very happy if they want to get married, they should get married. The Constitution of Slovakia Republic it says that marriage is between man and woman. If we want to change it in the constitution, we need to find 90 votes in the parliament. And I think this will never happen. I have nothing against LGBT community. I'm not going to vote for changing the law. What's the tennis situation like in Slovakia? I think we are still doing pretty good uh, based on the conditions that we are facing. And two of our best tennis girls, Kuzmova, Hrunčakova and, for example, Šmidlova, they are from the east of Slovakia. And they've been really working hard and I think they are doing just great. Still show the results every year. But definitely, like, we should start to think about the younger generation. I'm very happy to welcome my first female guest to a brand new episode of the Undiplomatic Podcast. Today I'm joined by former WTA tennis player with a career high ranking of 238, current member of parliament, I think, soon to be potentially state secretary uh, at the about to be formed Ministry of Sport and Tourism, Romana Tabak. Many thanks for joining me today. Thank you for being here. My pleasure. Thank you very much for the invite. Well, I, I've been looking low and high in Slovakia to find someone international, someone female, a role model, um, because I'm, I'm, I'm striking lots of blanks when it comes uh, to a male heavy industry here in Slovakia. I want to start immediately with tennis. It's a passion of mine. You're a former tennis player. You're still very invested in tennis emotionally and also in, in, in your future endeavors. The Billie Jean Cup was this weekend, and uh, I think you were at some tournament as well this weekend. First of all, what do you think uh, of the current state of Slovak tennis? I know that you've been invited to speak on several discussions, infrastructure. Uh, people have this misconception that tennis is just for rich people, but we see that sport here, people have to sacrifice, parents have to sacrifice. We look at Petra Volhova, her family sacrificed so much. She quit the federations. What's the tennis situation like in Slovakia? And how did you get through those ranks at the beginning? I mean, first of all, I would start and talk about the weekend that Slovakia beat Argentina. Argentina has 50 million uh, population, mm -hmm. Slovakia 5 million, and we beat them. So we beat like big tennis country from South America, which is great success. And we stay in the world group. And Slovakia tennis, I think we are still doing um, pretty good, um, you know, based on the conditions that we are facing. Mm -hmm. And uh, two of our best tennis uh, girls, uh, Kuzmova, Hrunčakova and, for example, Šmidlova, they are mm -hmm. from the east of Slovakia. Cool. And they are, they've been really working hard and, and I think they are doing just great. So the tennis, uh, Slovakian tennis, like... It's like, in good health? I mean, the Slovaks, they are like really the biggest critics ever, <laughs> but, you know, we still show the results every year, you know, but definitely like we should start to think about the younger generation and about the younger players that we will motivate them to to play tennis and what's the plus is to keep uh, playing professionally tennis because it's very, very hard. And that's where I want to start. Tennis is a very, very hard sport. Yeah. It requires a lot of hours, uh, a lot of sacrifices. What first drew you to tennis? Why did you fall in love with tennis? Was it something your parents instilled in you? Were they like passionate? I mean, um, first of all, I would say that that's why I'm a confident woman because I know that I've been working very hard since I'm little. Like I didn't have a childhood. I didn't um, didn't have fun that much uh, mm -hmm. with my uh, classmates, for example. Um, the way I started is um, I used to have a best friend who was a little bit chubby. <laughs> and my mom, she was like, oh, you should, you should go and play tennis. And she was like, Romana, um, jump with us to the car and we're going to drive her to tennis. And we get to the court and that's exactly what happened that I felt something I'm like, wow, this is exactly what I want to want to do. And I started to play tennis and did it come naturally? It came natural. Like that's exactly how I felt when I came first time to parliament. I was like, wow, this is exactly for me, Wow, you know? And then I was talking to my parents and, and I told them like, I would like to play tennis. And they were like, oh, I think you should think about it. 
I think you shouldn't play tennis. And oh, wow. I was always begging them to play. And that's how I started. And it's it's passion of mine since, since then. And of course, I had ups and downs. I quit, you know, I was crying a lot. But, you know, the goal was, you know, to keep playing tennis and to reach my uh, my goal. You're you're a very tall lady. I think that's uh, that's uh, ex- acceptable for me to say. Five foot ten and a half. I think it says on your bio. We did some pictures outside, and I was on my tippy toes. I know you've got you've had a heel disaster today. We'll talk about that la- a little bit later. What were your strengths on court? Was it the serve? Uh, was it the backhand? Or which were your were your real strengths? I would say that my strength was the fighting spirit. Mm-hmm. I think um, I could feel from my opponents that they have respect, mm-hmm. you know, and of course I was always um, screaming and being so emotional. I would say that my strength was was backhand. It was always solid, you know, well, from forehand, like I could play good, but also that I made a lot of mistakes. So I think uh, backhand and the fighting spirit. So th- those are the two big qualities, but obviously you would have had an advantage. The height advantage is also very good for for serving in tennis. I want to talk about the the tennis world. I've been very fortunate as a uh, in my previous life as a broadcaster. I've interviewed Roger Federer, Andy Murray, Caroline Wozniacki, uh, Victoria Azarenka, Sam Stoza, all of them world number ones. I think at some point uh, Grand Slam champions, all of them uh, actually as well, and all of them spoke about the struggle. Uh, and the amount of dedication. I'm now watching tennis still very passionately still to this day. I was not a, a great tennis player, but whatever. I am still very passionate about the sport and I'm watching the sport now. And if you could look at the female tennis, who are the players that excite you? you? Don't have to be Slovak. The ones that you want to pay and watch in the women's game. Who do you think currently of the of the c- current crop of women? Is it Iga Swiatek? Uh, is Definitely it... no Sviatek. <laughs> you don't like her game? I mean, I don't like her in general, you know, as a, as a tennis player. Uh-huh. Uh, like, she's not the one that I would say like, oh, I want to watch her today. I, I switched the channel, to be honest really? with you. Really? But nothing against personally. No, she, of course, but my, I was just my... interested to know why yeah. a tennis player yeah. tunes in or tunes out. Because she has no, she's not emotional. There's not something special. Mm-hmm. Um of her that I'm interested in. I like Sabalenka mm-hmm. because I would say that if I would make it to top 100 or to reach my uh, my goal, I think I would play like her. You know, she's emotional. You know, she puts some nice dress on. Like She's also yeah. very elegant. Yes. Yeah, yeah, she can be elegant, you know, yeah. but but um, I love the emotions, you know, she... How does she breaks the rackets? You know, she fights, she screams. That's... Um, Were you a, a racket breaker? I, I used to be, yeah. Yeah, I used to be. But oh, they, they, Rafa Nadal famously said he's never broken a He broke yeah. a racket once. Yeah. And then Tony Nadal said, I never want to see that again. And yeah. since he's never broken a racket. Yeah, he's very much disciplined. She's like, a, he's like a robot. Like I would, I would never have this kind of discipline. Were you, That's why I ended up the way I ended up. <laughs> no. Are you? Would you say you're a bit of a diva? Are you a diva? I mean, yeah, it was um, it was a little bit of my minus of mine that sometimes the ten, the attention mm-hmm. during my career was more about also a little bit about the passion about the fashion, and I think I should be more focused on the training process. I think yeah. the passion for fashion and the and the tabloids here continue yeah. when with how you dress, and we'll talk a little bit later yeah. about the pressure of looking good all the time. But I would love to congratulate you that you interview those big, uh, amazing athletes. Athletes. Like Thank you very don't much. Don't take it for granted. No, I mean, it was blessing and, and some, yes. some incredible footballers as well. But for me, uh, Roger Federer has always been my hero. Yeah. Uh, I don't have heroes mm-hmm. generally um, because I don't believe in idols, but yeah. I've never seen someone who does his business with so much class, elegance and perfection. Yeah. Novak can win all the titles in the world, but I've been very fortunate to have watched Roger at Wimbledon, uh, at Flushing Meadows, uh, at uh, in Dubai, the Dubai Duty Free Tennis Championships, and it's different. His feet, the way he moves his feet. You know, can say that Rafa and Novak never give up, but Roger spent much less time on court, and people forget that. Yeah. He might have won less Grand Slams, but I guarantee the time he spent on court was much less. So thank you very much for the, for the, for the compliment. Uh, I, I, I don't take it for granted. I'm, I'm very lucky in that regard. Um, move, I actually wanted to say the, the female tennis player I love watching is Ons Jabeur. Oh, really? Yeah, because she has front game. She comes to the net. She does slice. It's not just uh, side to side baseline. She has a delicate touch. She had great interviews as well. 
She's very emotional. She speaks eloquently. I'm a big, I lived in Tunisia as well. So I, I, I have a very strong affiliation with the region. Um, I, I, she's the only women's tennis player I think I would go to pay money to watch. I'm not a big wow, fan of that's the- that's very the... interesting. Because for example, I used to play in Tunisia 10 years ago and uh, I lost in the first round mm -hmm. against Romania and a player. Mm -hmm. And I knew that if I win, I'm not gonna- Not Simona Halep. No, 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 but I play against her as well. <laughs> and I knew that if I beat this Romanian girl, I would play ONS in the second round. And I was really looking forward oh. to it. And that's exactly that. I was playing the first, uh, first round and I was like, Oh, let's just finish this match like I'm really looking forward to play against Ons and I lost like very it was very tight match mm -hmm. because the Romanian players they always knew how to play against me they're like you know like a circus girl you know like slides yeah. drop shots and I lost and then I went to watch Ons yeah. to play against the Romanian girl and I was like mm, I really wanted to play her I and she, it was full stadium you like her game or not because I like her game but I wouldn't go to to watch her Okay, so here's my big issue, and we've talked about uh, the Grand Slams pay equal money uh, for the for the men and the women, in, but it's not the case in the WTA and the ATP. So different tournaments have different point systems and different prize money. It's very complicated for people who don't follow tennis. Yeah, and especially, I'm not sure if it's still like this, but I think the um, uh, pravidla how do you say pravidla the rules yeah. are not the same on every grand slams i mm -hmm. think in, in the fifth set yeah. each grand slam has different rules yeah like so tie break, tie break, break or, 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 until 10, 10, yeah. or the uh, yeah. normal set and i think this is not normal because the grand slams are independent there should be like same rules but they're independent to each country right so australia owns the australian open uh, the lawn tennis association the aeltc owns wimbledon and flushing meadows and so forth each but the atp and the, and the WTA and the ITF are separate as well. I know, but it's it's very it's confusing. It's confusing. You know, you never know what. Do you think set. women and men should yeah. earn the same amount of money on Grand Slams? Yeah. yeah. No, during the rest of the tour. Mm, I mean, yeah. If the the don, not donations, but um, how do you say the, the prize money? The prize money. If it's the same, I would say yes, yes. If it's already said, like let's let's be but equal. What if yeah. it, I mean, I, I'm 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 a feminist. Yeah, I'm not. <laughs> uh, which is good. So we can fist pump there. We're the opposite. We're the opposite. Well, I have I'm not daughters. a feminist. I have yeah. daughters. Maybe you'd be. <laughs> And I do want equal pay and, and the gender gap equality to, to, to match where there is meritocracy, right? So I believe that if you, Romana, do the same as Zulf, we should pay, get paid exactly the same amount of money, right? We're level playing field, right? I'm a big believer in that. But if you're playing two sets and I'm playing five and I'm playing five hours and you're paying one hour 30 and... 8 million people are watching my game and there's 400 million in sponsorship coming to mine and only 50 to yours. Why should you get paid the same as me? I feel you. But on the other hand, like men's are much more stronger than we are. So I think that the way they made it like <laughs> two sets and, and three sets or five sets, I think that's the equal based on their strength. I'm probably going to have some haters and some, <laughs> I'm going to lose some followers no, over no, my no. controversial remarks no. about. No, I always respect the other opinion. Good. Uh, well, I, I respect your opinion and maybe you respect mine, but my followers probably no, will have some, some different opinions. So that, I mean, as far as the men's tennis is concerned, there's one guy who, who is box office, Carlito Alcaraz. Uh, Carlos Alcaraz, I think he's absolute phenomenal. He's great for the game now that two of the bigs are retiring. Yannick Sinner is another guy who who who, who yesterday beat Novak in the. I was watching the game. It was a it was a great game. Very tense. Very great. tight. Great, but I would say, and I'm so confident about the saying this, the crowd win the match for Yannick Sinner. Yeah, he's especially, in Italy. Especially the first set, they were they were like screaming and, and booing. Doing... They were booing after the first set. That's unacceptable. But yeah. it's fine. I think nobody gets get used to it but this match he lost because of the Italian crowd I, I also know Novak's agent quite well and, and we were discussing a project during the pandemic and it, for some reason it didn't work out I have very big respect for Novak I've never been a great admirer of how he plays tennis why do you think people still don't like him I mean he's got all the records yeah. why do people not like him I mean, last year I was in Belgrade at his the tennis academy and in the tennis center. Um, he's not just amazing athlete, but he's amazing human being. And what person. he's, his legacy that he's leaving like next uh, for the younger generation. I don't think so that Nadal is and Roger is doing this. Yeah. 
I would say it's because of where is he, where is he coming from, that yeah. he's Serbian and he's a little bit irritating people. Yeah. I love Novak because yeah. of what he's doing and how he is spending his uh, money. The way he's also like dressing, he's not showing off a lot of money, mm -hmm. you know, that he's rich. Like, he's humble. Exactly. He's so humble. And I would say that he's, he's Serbian and he likes to, you know, so you show think the that, attitude. You, you think know? that the opinion, the public opinion is geared away from him because he's Serbian? Of course, Roger yeah. Federer has his foundation yeah. in Africa that raises yeah. lots of money for Zambia. in, in Zambia. Yeah. So I, I, I get, I get what you're saying. Mm -hmm. uh, I just there it just seems to be an opinion amongst some people that he's perhaps not as likable as. And of course, uh, Roger and Rafa, when he's playing a match, you never saw them, you know, irritating or on con confronting the the crowd. Yeah, Novak does that, and I love it because it's emotions. But I love Nick Kyrgios. Yeah, I was about to. <laughs> I love Nick Kyrgios. I was about to just say that yeah. I love Nick. And I used to I used to watch him at Wimbledon. He's kind of a little bit crazy, I would say. That More you could than see that. that he's he's not he's not mentally stable. But as he a uses tennis it, player, but he yeah, uses it yeah, to his advantage. But as a tennis player, like it's uh, I would pay a ticket to watch Nick Kyrgios. Hundred percent. Yes. Hundred yeah, percent. We that, agree on that. And the final, when he made it to the final of Wimbledon, when he won the first set against Djokovic, Djokovic yeah. I honestly thought he could do it. But then yeah. I think it's a belief thing with him. When he plays the game he wants to play, he's unbeatable. He's probably got the best mechanism for a serve uh, anyone could hope for. Um, I would love to see him win one Grand Slam. Yeah, me too. Uh, Hopefully, he's coming back. I'm yeah, not sure. he said Australia. Oh, it, did he? He, he said Amazing. Australia. So, hope, I mean, we're just talking, talking about it. tennis. We've almost forgotten about Slovakia yeah. and, <laughs> and you for a minute. I, I, I like to be taken away. I'm, I'm, as you can see, I'm very passionate about tennis and, and, and so are you, which is lovely. When I first got in touch with you, I, I saw that you'd went to Durham University and there aren't that many people that uh, come from Slovakia that have studied in the UK. I've met a few, uh, Vladko Bilcik, who probably you don't see eye to eye on many things. He was at Oxford University, super smart guy. And Durham always beats uh, oh, in uh, fencing. In fencing. Oxford, so. And, 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 and I saw that you went to Durham and you mentioned off air that you had a very difficult time or a very uh, aggressive learning curve on how British universities do coaching. What was your experience like in Durham University? I mean, it was a great experience, but it was just tough conditions. You know, the whole management, um, we used to train at 6 a.m. I, I had to wake up. The weather is always so cold <laughs> and there was no mercy. They were like, oh, good morning. I mean, um, go do your uh, warm up. You know, it was, you know, they had no mercy. You know, I was there to to win the match for Durham. I was there to get my education. And and it was just the whole management was, was very difficult. In the morning we had training, then I had school. Then we had uh, conditioning training with my Scottish trainer. <laughs> then we had match. I used to travel all around the England and it was just um, what a great opportunity I mean I mean yeah but I was I was a little bit struggling especially with the weather yeah. but when yeah. I look back like I I feel so I'm sorry blessed. I'm sorry Ramon I'm going to disagree about the weather I left England 16 years ago and I moved to the Middle East I lived in Dubai mm -hmm. And then that's where I met my wife. And, and, and then we eventually came to settle back in Slovakia. And everybody's telling me, oh, you get four great seasons in Slovakia. Rain this week is more than I've seen in London. It's been bad this week, the rain. Uh, the weather isn't can be difficult here too. So I know, I know the United Kingdom gets a big rap for the weather, but yeah. uh, sometimes Slovakia is not an easy place to live sure. either. Especially February. Yeah, my birthday. Yeah. <laughs> Where in England did you enjoy visiting? I mean, you must have loved London. I mean, you're a fashionista, uh, London from where I'm from. I mean, the most uh, place that I enjoyed in England is Stonehenge. Have Stonehenge, of course. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I went there by myself. I treat myself with a, with a nice uh, trip. I always like to travel by myself. You know, it's, it's part of my uh, relax. And um, Stonehenge, there is really something special about that place. Mm. Really um, magical, it, druids. magical. There is really something, something special about it. Like you feel kind of that you are a little bit like a flying mm. above the ground. Really, like um, it, it's not just some some stones placed on the field. I definitely recommend to go there. So yeah, so to all our, our, our followers, listeners, and viewers, Stonehenge gets a thumbs up for visit Great Britain. Um, after Durham. 
you you come back and um, you're diagnosed or you were diagnosed earlier with Lyme disease. Yeah, that's why I, uh, that's why I quit my professional tennis. And people don't really understand how severe and how yeah. damaging Lyme disease is. And there are ticks here in Slovakia and the Central Europe have very aggressive ticks. How did you discover that you had Lyme disease? Yeah, I discovered that I have a Lyme disease uh, during... Um, my uh, my tennis tournament mm -hmm. and I had um, kind of like a circle on my back but I didn't find the tick mm -hmm. and I thought that it's allergy and I kept training every day and I was getting tired and I was like that's great I'm 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 really training so hard and I have another tournament and um, my mom she was like listen you should go to doctor to check the tick and I was like no it's just the allergy I'm not going I, I exactly I re remember the day and I was still getting like more tired and tired. And I was like, that's great. Okay, keep training. And then one training, like I lost like all the energy. I had to like sit down and the the place around the tick really like hurts me that I started to cry. And I never cried that much, but this time I was just like mm -hmm. real like deep pain. And I was like, this is a, it. like I have to go to, to doctor. They took my blood and they said like, oh, like you have really high numbers like you have to go to Prague for a lump uh, puncture mm -hmm. and they find out that I don't have it in the brain yet, which was great. But the doctor said like, oh, this is really tough disease. Like you should definitely stop playing tennis for a while. Or you will get the medications. And he told me like, uh, you know, we don't know which way it will go. Maybe it will be in your joints. You will have a problem. Like it, like they literally told me that it, this, this uh, whole recovery term will be like for next year or so and then i was 200 in the world 240 wta and i just felt like the the same like when i saw first time the tennis court i felt like this is it like mm -hmm. i'm done with this career from one day to another uh one month before i beat the top 100 player wta tournament in budapest and my life just fall apart I'm so sorry that yeah. you have to live and you live with it for, for life, right? Yeah. Lyme disease. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Um, and there's medication that helps, but yeah. really. I don't take medications anymore because I just, I just go to check uh, up myself. At the Did doctor. you get the fatigue? I hear that. Chronic not anymore. Fatigue. Not yeah. anymore. Not anymore. Like I'm very fortunate that it, it didn't stick with me um, for, for a long time, you know. But it impacted you enough for your tennis career. Yeah, to, I, to... I, I quit tennis because of this. Yeah. Lyme, Lyme disease aside, had you set yourself a career goal that you thought, I'm going to be top 50? Because maybe people don't realize just how hard it is for a tennis player to make money on the tour. I know that, again, Novak does wonderful things to try and make sure that money gets dispersed to lower ranked yes, players. Yes. So exactly. people in the thousands, people, the group, yeah. Yeah, yeah. people in the thousands who play challenges, they have to pay for coaches. You have to pay for training. No one's paying for these Hotel, things. And everything. only people in the top 100 yeah. can earn a living. Yeah. Uh, from Not even top 100. Maybe top, top 50. 50. Yeah. yeah. So did you have a number in mind? And how much effort, money and time has your family and you invested in that you think, was there a goal that you had all shared together with your coach and stuff? I mean, my ultimate goal was um, top 100, top 50 around. I, I was never like totally a perfectionist that, oh, I want to be number one in the world. I, I, I wanted to enjoy. So you knew you had limitations? Yeah, kind of. But for me, was also very interested that I'll be part of uh, tennis players who get um, good uh, marketing uh, mm -hmm. contracts. Like I, I was enjoying the Grand Slams when I used to play as a junior, that they were also like, um, how to say, events for mm -hmm. certain players. Like I, like how I'm enjoying politics. I'm yeah. a lawmaker. Like yeah. I used to be a lawmaker because right now I'm not part of the parliament anymore mm. because I didn't run. Yeah. But I, all, I was also enjoying politics from the other side, not only in the parliament, you know, the interview the events, you know, meeting with people, serving the people, you know, so I was taking, I was taking tennis, you know, as um, a package, exactly as a package. So for me, it wasn't important, like, oh, I have to be number one. I just wanted to uh, play main draw of the Grand Slams. And this is what I don't like. And I agree with you. Yeah. It should be about everything, yeah. a little bit about everything. Yeah. Emma Raducanu, of course, who's yeah. a British, uh, former British number one. Her name is Radu, Raducanu because okay. there's Raducanu. Raducanu. Yeah. Ah, yeah. She's Romanian, obviously yeah. the name originally. Um, she she won a Grand Slam and now the English media are terrible with her. They treat her terribly and she's fabulous in interviews. She says, you know, you can never take my Grand Slam away. Um, I did it. I came from qualifying and won a Grand Slam. She's the only person in the history of tennis to ever do that. And she's very eloquent in her interviews, but 
people don't like the fact that she made 50 million pounds from her endorsements with Evian and with Porsche yeah, or whoever it was. And good for her. Good I'm for f- and I'm very glad to hear that she, she's still strong minded. That's exactly how it's supposed to be. Because for example, as well, I'm in the politics. I'm the first uh, tennis player ever to get to parliament. I'm the first uh, ever uh, politician who, who, who said uh, the our father uh, prayer in yeah. the parliament? I think it's very important. There's so many. I mean, um, how do you say uh, certain goals that I did, mm-hmm. and and still the Slovakian press they're pointing on my minuses that I did some mistakes. Like I'm a human, sure. you know, and they they just can't get over that I'm still confident and I just go there and I keep and I keep working, you know, and I just don't understand. Keep and grinding. Exactly. And that's why I said like, oh, we have not much women in in politics, but you know, if you don't have a thick skin for this, like your life is ruined. Mine is not. <laughs> I'm I'm very glad to hear that it's water off a duck's back, yeah. as you say. Yeah. It's just wash. And I'm go- very glad to hear about this uh, Raducanu that she's still, uh, you know, um, she can she can um, how do you say talks back, uh, yeah. you know, this uh, nonsense and negativity. And you will not know, you think your your tabloids are bad in Slovakia. Nothing is worse than British media. They make you a hero on Monday and they want to destroy you on, on, on Wednesday. I can't believe this. It, and it's, it's been... And I, and I was watching the movie at, about Harry and Meghan. Mm-hmm. And now that you are telling me maybe it's really true that they left because of the tabloids. But I, I think I, there the, was also a little bit of say on their side. But, you know, I... You know, I've never been uh, in their shoes, so I don't like to, you know... To but you have an idea of what it, it's like to be yeah. in the public eye yeah. and get that criticism. Yeah. I mean, Slovakia is a much smaller pool than yeah. than, oh. than being Harry or Meghan. Yeah. But you, every day, you go out and someone's going to make an observation. Yeah. You yeah. say the Lord's Prayer in Parliament. Yeah. For someone, that's a good thing. For someone else, yeah. why is she bringing politics into a secular country? Uh, sorry, why is she bringing religion into a secular yeah. country, in, into Parliament? And it's going to be you, because you're a woman, that's going to be criticized first. The marketing side of tennis, I'm interested. Did you feel that you made enough money? No, not at all. Everything what I what I earn, I, I spend, you know. I but would you would you have done things differently? I mean, like you look at Sybil Cover, for example, yeah. she did really good. She had a huge endorsement with Lacoste. Uh, I used to be sponsored by Lacoste You were well. sponsored by Lacoste. Your, I think your handbag. Was your handbag? Look? Yeah. No, yeah. yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, I noticed these things. That's uh, great. Uh, and uh, and uh, and she had great endorsements. Daniela Hantakova had great endorsements yeah. as well. Was there anyone coming up to you with the advice on how to package your brand? I mean, you are a very attractive lady. Am I allowed to say that? Uh, will I get cancelled? No. Uh, no, I want to get cancelled. So you fit the mold, right? Attractive lady, athlete, politician. Do you feel that like you could have earned more more from branding and maybe outside of Slovakia? I mean, um, now you're asking about back then, right? Yeah. I mean, even this um, money from the marketing and from the from the big brands, you have to have the results. Mm-hmm. And I was still 240 WTA. So everything is based on your results, no matter how pretty you are. For example, Anna Kournikova, but oh, she was just pretty. No, she was top 10 player. And, and five-time was, Grand Slam exactly, doubles winner. Exactly, exactly. Like she was an amazing tennis player. Mm. And I'm always here to support women who likes to work hard, yeah. look great, <laughs> and keep like striving. That's very important. You work know? hard, look, get, yeah. look great, keep striving. And plus education. Maybe that's we can the, create yeah. a brand. Yeah. Work hard. Look great, yeah. keep striving. It's like a Nike motto. Exactly. Especially for women because so many... Women's in Slovakia, they don't have confidence. They're like, oh, either I look good or I get education. No, you can get you can get great educations and you can still look good. And plus you can be a mom, you know? 100%. We'll talk about you. During being my a- pregnancy, I gained 23 kilos. And my first idea was in my mind, I was like, I'm going to look even better than before the pregnancy. And Motivated. that's exactly what happened. Athlete mindset. Yeah. Exactly. You have to have it. And that's exactly, that's why I think that I keep staying in Slovakia because this is exactly, this is my legacy for the younger women's, you know. Okay. So now we're moving away from tennis because you mentioned parliament, you mentioned politics. So you've led into this way. Yes, you're you're no longer parliamentary. You didn't run this time. What inspired you uh, to go into politics at a time when tennis was all that you had known? Yeah. I mean, it wasn't only because I I was already educated. I was studying new media in New York and business management at at Durham. My politics started at Durham, to be honest with you, because they killed a journalist and there was the protest of Slovakian people all around the world. And they said, like, go to, to a square 
and just, you know, So we're talking about the Jan Kuciak. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And I was the only Slovakian at Durham University at the time. And I went by myself on the main square with the tabloid and saying like, oh, like I stand for, I don't know, anti-corruption or for this, for this uh, journalist or so. And then I started to be interested um, in politics. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was always an activist. I went for the protest, but I, I was never having like, you know, big elbows and so like, oh, I want to go to this uh, political side or so. And the way my politics started, then I was pregnant. I went to a protest mm -hmm. against a corrupted uh, deputy of uh, justice, mm -hmm. and uh, the main um, politicians from the from the political party uh, they recognized me as a tennis player. And we started to talk. And I said, "Oh, I just finished. I'm gonna give birth in January. And if you need anything, let me know." And they called me two two months before the elections, three months, just like do one run for us. And I was like, "Yeah." Oh, I mean, it wasn't straight away like, "Yeah," because you know, I. I had to read about them, like what's uh, what's going on. And that time they had like 4%, you know, mm -hmm. uh, in the election. So, you can, so which party was this? Uh, ordinary people. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I wanted to say, is so it, and they asked me like, what, what, which number you want to be on the candidate? And a lot of people are like, oh, the highest that I get to the parliament. I was like, I don't mind. You give me the number that you feel like. I just want to have two same numbers that it will look good on the billboards because <laughs> that's very important, you know, the, from the marketing side sure. that, that you catch attention. You're always thinking about these exactly. things. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. That's very important. <laughs> <laughs> But back then I was like, that was so courageous that I didn't ask for like, oh, I want to be top 10. Yeah. I said like, whatever you give me. And they gave me 44. Perfect. It's almost like, like impossible to get to the parliament. And I get it. So that's a hell of an achievement. In fact, I, yeah. I'm exactly with and you. And during the campaign, I had already my schedule until the elections. And I remember in January, I had like the whole week kind of like, um, um, how do you say? Um, it was marked that yeah. this week I have uh, time for my birth. I have to recover. And the next day, after one week, I already have to give interviews and go back to campaign. So everything was uh, was pla set. was set. Yeah. I'm like you when it comes to numbers and symmetry. I was born in 77. Mm. So I'm showing everybody my age, unfortunately. But uh, I wanted everything, all my football jerseys, all everything. I wanted 77. It's a cool number. Seven I, is, I'm, I'm seven of May. Seven is a very good number. And I had it on my football boots. I had it everywhere. So 77 was there. And when my wife was giving birth to my children, I wanted them to be born in prime numbers. Mm -hmm. So my eldest daughter was born on the 5th, 7th, 11th, 5, 7, 11, uh, which are all prime numbers. Mm -hmm. you're, you're trying to think mm -hmm. your Durham University education is getting you there. And then she was due, my second child was due to be born on the 1st of the 11th, 13. Mm -hmm. Again, all prime numbers, but she was premature. So I said to my wife, she failed me on the number symmetry. So I know what numbers mean in terms of branding. Uh, it's interesting that you th think about that. So now you're in parliament. Uh, no, I'm not. no. After this, oh. uh, after that first initial, we're, we're, we're going back in time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you get number 44, you're elected to parliament. What's your mandate? What do you feel? Wh which area did you really want to push yourself with that party at the time? I know you've been in so, so different parties subsequently, but which areas were you going to give your expertise in? To be honest with you, um, the way I get to the parliament was kind of, uh, something amazing, but it just confirmed how I felt about myself before. I was already confident mm -hmm. that I'm going to do something big because I was working on myself. I knew that it wasn't coincidence that Darren gave me full scholarship or so. So in the parliament, um, I said before that it's very important that you know exactly who you are before politics, because when you get to the politics from one day to another, you are on the high level mm -hmm. and you are kind of glamorized and everybody's like, oh, you're so important. And it can really change the way it can change your character. Mm -hmm. And that's why I said, like, I knew exactly who I was before and the politics didn't change me. And when I get to parliament, I was like, oh, let's do, uh, I was a lawmaker mm -hmm. and I was only focused to change the law, to make um, life better for uh, Slovakian citizens. And that's, that's exactly what happened. I changed the law in terms of people who are riding bicycles on the road, that there, there should be a um, 1.5 meters the, um, the, distance. Diff the distance and and cars should be more tolerated to to riders mm -hmm. and, and, and backwards. And we were working on this law like almost 10, 10 months, you know. For example, one of them. So you feel, you, I can, judging by the way you're saying, you're very proud of this, and oh, yeah, and, and rightly so. And 
you remained authentic yeah. throughout of this. So you're true to your brand yeah. the whole way through. So this yeah. confidence thing is obviously a, a clear uh, a clear attribute of your quality that you possess. Exactly, especially because I'm from Bratislava. I'm I'm not pro liberal. That we, like our kids are allowed to do anything, and I know that I'm very attacked by so many sarcastic, sarcastics, some fun uh, sides. I know it all, and I know exactly. That's why I should be even more confident, more work hard, and I have to tell people about my result, results because other people they are just pointing on my mistakes, which I always will make. Yeah. They will always um, find yeah. exactly something. That's why I stand for myself, and I'll be always like, oh, this is exactly what I. I did for you well everybody says if you're not in the newspapers you're nobody yeah. so yeah. the minute no one's talking about you anymore then you feel that you've escaped from yeah. public is public eye being in the public eye something that you enjoy or is it something that you find a bit of a burden or is That's, it both yeah it's a very good question because since i was little i was signing papers that oh i want to be one time i want to be famous but mm -hmm. there is a big um, difference between being famous and being successful I become successful, I think, I and mean, I don't care <laughs> whatever, <laughs> whoever <laughs> thinks something different. I think that I'm a successful. And um, what I want to tell you is that being kind of, you said famous or on the public eye? Yeah, being in the public eye. Is it? Being on the public eye. I mean, I was, I always wanted to be on the public eye, but when I become on the public eye and we're talking only about sm small Slovakia, it is a little bit difficult because I can't, I can't go out anymore and being just myself and just to relax. Like I really have to watch out whenever, wherever I go. And especially there's, there's still situations that I'm like, oh, I'm going for a bicycle and I just put my head on and, and I don't feel uh, famous or whatever. But then other people are texting me like, oh, we see you here. I see it in the comments that like people, um, like actually they really recognize me and I really have to like uh, watch out and, and to be careful, you know. It's a double-edged sword because yeah. obviously uh, the more visible you are, the yeah. more your profile rises. So you, you've, you've been in the tennis world, now in the politics world, and you're at receptions. I see you at receptions and and uh, embassies and every and, and, and then there's also the pressure looking somewhere as well. Do you feel the pressure that you have to dress well the whole time? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I always have to look good. But the most thing that I'm a little bit start, I'm starting to struggle is, is about the makeup. It takes little like literally like uh, 20 minutes. And of course, there are so many of us that I would like to go without makeup, but you have to look like that you are you dress perfection. exactly not totally yeah. perfection but you know the upravena yeah. that you are uh, put together you are put, put together, together yeah. you know so this is a little bit annoying but on the other hand now that i know what it means to be a little bit on the public eye i would never want to be like famous like beyonce like worldwide famous yeah. it must be very annoying because for <laughs> example i go to prague i go to vienna i go to london and i can be myself i know i know that no one recognized me but for example i went to italy yeah um back in the spring and and they uh, and they took picture of me and it was well, slovak like, media yeah. took picture of you yeah somebody from the slovaks and they put it in the slovak media and i was like that's that's a little bit that weird you know oh my god I, i'm not yeah. sure uh, i could i could deal with that yeah. and, and obviously you're a mother and you're a very proud yes. protective mother so yes. it must be very difficult being a mum, uh being in the public eye um one question that people may ask do you put your makeup on before you drop your son off at school or nursery no no, no, never, never. No. I put makeup uh, right before the event that I have my uh, makeup, makeup, makeups in the back, and I just do it. But I don't like it anymore because I do, I do train a lot still. Yeah. I practice. So uh, are you still got and hit? Yeah, yeah. I play a uh, third league in um, in Italy for Naples. I per oh. I play Naples. That's every super spring. cool. I'm glad that you kept up your passion, yeah. and, and and fashion is that er ever an area that you've re really wanted to explore? I mean, you you know. I remember during the election, uh, the, the most recent elections, we there was uh, everybody commenting every day a different dress. I think your purple dress that you wore when you voted and they showed a bit of your décolletage. Yeah. 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 So I'm, I'm using a, a euphemism for décolletage. Do you feel, I mean, one day when your, your son is older um, and maybe harmful also for your family as well, thing that all they want to talk about is how my yeah. how you look yeah. and your body parts. Exactly. And... Uh, thank you for pointing on this and the next day it was in the newspaper and i was like this is unbelievable i went for elections i don't think so the um uh, whose business say? is it i 
that's exactly like if the media are pointing on you that they, they want to point on of some some kind of uh, that your decollage is too too yeah. too low or something, yeah. you can't do anything about it, yeah. you know, because that's exactly my name sell, and and they have all the clicks, so they just made this up and and. And what can I do about it? You know, and I was just signing the papers and I, in that time, I didn't want to put that attention on, yeah. you know, yeah. that's exactly when the media put it in the mind, they, they, they made a picture about you. Do you think some people might say the opposite? You know, your, your haters will say that you, you staged all of this. Definitely. There yeah. will be always people that say that, you know, all the negativities about me and I respect that. And I think exactly the opposite and that's the end of our conversation. Perfect. And that's the way it should be. I honestly, I, I'm, I'm now too old to, to listen to all, everybody every day has a new thing to hate. Yeah. I don't know how anybody has the time to, yeah. to dream up new things to hate. Yeah. And by the time I, I really learned that the haters are hurting themselves the most. That's why in politics I can be very, I'm not hateful in politics, but I like to, you know, to, to, to have the like kind of a little bit, um, sassy conversation with the but other you've politics. Said, you, you, you've been controversial. Yeah, I mean, yeah, 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 exactly. I like to be sometimes, you know, I like the, the political fights, but everything. Physical um, fights. No, physical fights. No, she, she attacked me. Yeah, she attacked you. Yeah, I was just defending well, myself. I promise you, I, I, I won't pick a fight with you. <laughs> You'd rather not. Yeah. And um, that's what she said. She, she's got my number. <laughs> <laughs> um, controversy. So you also, so now I've spent time with you and I've got to know you a little bit better. It's never the image that we see on social media. Everybody's always completely, life is different. Yeah. Social media, you're at home making Vivar and you're, and you're um, making yeah. your kids backpack doing all of this stuff yeah. that all parents do never trust what you see in the media like uh, even if they are like filming their underpants or something yeah. it's, it's not true at all so confidence is one thing i've i've learned from the time that we spent together you're a very confident person this is not your native language and you're very even though you studied at durham and you've been in new york you're very comfortable speaking to me yeah. uh confidence you don't like tennis will have helped that as well this is obviously politics has also given you a big platform. Controversy. So things that are controversial, you don't shy away. You don't walk away from things that are controversial either. Yeah. This is a new cycle for Slovakia's history. 2000 and the recent elections, a new government has been put in place. Yeah. Um, you didn't run for parliament this time. Uh, you're now affiliated to a different party. That's the Slovak National Party. And there will be a new ministry. Uh, coming online perhaps in january i think not perhaps but for sure for sure in january and it has been suggested that you will be the state secretary for sports and tourism so if that is the case i want to be the first to wish you a very big congratulations thank you very much but i don't want to confirm my my position yet but i will that's be... why i gave it an yes. inverted commas <laughs> despite the flowers no, it's the flowers. no i'm gonna that's I'm why gonna... the celebration yeah. or commiseration <laughs> no i might just do a coffee at the, <laughs> at the ministry oh, no <laughs> i'll be definitely working at the ministry of sports and tourism but i'm gonna confirm the the position in january that it's when is for sure because since it is a new ministry mm -hmm. and we are looking for a new buildings and everything is setting up i just want to Make sure make, it, make sure that everything is set and it's and it's a hundred percent sure. Good. We talked before a little bit about how you feel results oriented um, solutions is what yeah. Slovak people need in every wake, wake of life, whether yeah. that's foreign affairs, economic diplomacy, business. Yeah. Sport is another one. Yeah. I mentioned Petra Volhova when she she left the federation. Uh, I, I I'm also uh, I see the effect of. Uh, sports administration in Slovakia and I see it suffering. Um, my daughter is an athlete. I mentioned that to you and, and we see every day that there are complications. Infrastructure needs to change. I know that you have some global opinions about uh, the world and I don't want to bring that on, but I think maybe a more British approach to sports uh, would benefit a country like Slovakia. The management, the way they, the way they um, combine sports with uh, with education you know like in for example emma raducanu yeah 
um, their uh, her parents they were really strict that she's keep keep doing her education well that she finish high school like they were really uh, they didn't care that she's playing professional tennis and that's that's exactly that's very important because in Slovakia either the parents they decided to like oh we had a pro- professional athlete like he doesn't go to school like yeah. that's the worst like when you watch a movie Richard Williams yeah. he didn't let play tennis tournaments until 14 years old. Mm -hmm. They were just training and it's like, no, no, my kids, Serena Williams and Venus, they have to have normal childhood and education until 14 years old. And Mm -hmm. then they went to play straight away WTA tournaments. They didn't play junior. Which was, they were the first, I think, who who, who did that. So um, I would definitely recommend the Slovakian parents always present the education. So you've got a magic wand. I'm giving you a magic wand that you can wave the Romana magic over the Ministry of Sports and Tourism. Where do you feel the areas that you'd like to immediately improve and say, well, we need to get rid of corruption here. We need to build, rebuild this stadium. We need to have more kids at grassroots level in these sports. We need to be able to make golf and tennis more affordable. We need to find a pathway we need to find the money that's given to ice hockey and football to be given to to basketball and to to handball. Magic wand. Where do you where do you want to go with all yeah, of this? You describe it all, but first of all, since three years, I'm working with the Canoe Stick uh, Federation. That's our um, most popular uh, sports that um, is doing the most well at Olympic Games. They don't have um, national uh, training center. The way they uh, where they practice, the conditions are very poor. So I would say this would be the first like, oh, let's let's let's, let's fix this. Let's fix this. It's it's Zemnik. And the second one, even I used to be a professional tennis player. I'm also more focused on just general sports in schools. So I would fix all the gym classes that every school would have great gym class and access to a good gym uh, class uh, exercises, I would say. What about mental health? I know, I know this is a, a hot topic, social issues, often controversial. Mental health. You know, I, I I looked at my daughter yesterday and she was sad coming from training and she trains between 20 and 24 hours a week. I'm so sad to hear that, that you said that you saw her like a little bit um sad going yeah. out of practice. And, uh, it should be fun. Yeah. Sport should be fun. Especially you, at that age. Yeah. And, and, I, and I said to her and I was like, you know, is someone talking to you that is, we, we have a sports psychologist for her um, and we have another psychologist for my, my daughter and it's not like I'm... A, I'm a, a new wave parent that wants to have psychologists for my parents, but I think it's uh, for my children. I think it's important that people speak about mental health because in sports as well, it's very selfish, especially uh, individual sports. You're locked in. Everything is planned for you. You have to do this. You have to, you've got no one to talk to. No one understands what it is that you're going through. Do you think maybe this is an area Slovakia really is behind in? I can see it, but do you think this is an area that you, sh- you think should improve? Exactly. That's why I am one of the uh, few politicians that I'm very open about the issues that I used to face. For example, I was uh, bulimic. I had bulimia for two and a half years. Mm -hmm. It's a mental mental struggle and disorder. And that's exactly because of I couldn't play tennis. And I'm very open about these mental issues. And I also want to be... kind of um, talking about the awareness that mental health is very important and especially parents should start to build the mental strength strength for the children you know to be to be to give confidence to the children to have good relationships with them this, this is exactly where it was built you know so uh, and as well the sports like give you the confidence and building mm-hmm. but um it, it is very important that um the relationship between parents and and uh, and the kids you know that's exactly where it's built you should start to do it as well I, i'm already doing it with isaac i i i we i visit i don't know how many more psychologists and psych, psych psychiatrists we have to visit but for me it, it doesn't matter uh, the mental health or I, I, I don't, I'd rather say the happiness of my children mm-hmm. is of paramount importance and whatever it takes mm-hmm. to make sure that they're but happy. There is, um, Zalf, there is a difference between uh, happiness and joy. It's very important that the, ki- the kid is more joyful than happiness because happiness is like, oh, um, this kind of uh, teaching, key. teaching key. It's uh, it's good for a little yeah. bit. But being a joyful, it means that you're like satisfied and like you can be a little bit sad and still joyful. That's exactly what, what, what I am. Were you that- a happy kid? 
I used to be a happy kid. Yeah. But yeah. I was struggling the most from 21 until 28. I was really struggling with my little life. Really. Were you a happy, are you a happy adult now? Are you a yeah. joyful adult? Yeah. I am right now. I'm very much joyful, but it's hard. And there are days that I'm sad. That's why I have a psychologist. Mm -hmm. I'm visiting my psychologist like every third month. It's very important to have a psychologist and, and, and only one that you are really mm -hmm. trusting. You know, and I always uh, talk about these things. And on the other hand, I'm very open with myself. Mm -hmm. But for example, about my son, Isaac, I never show his pictures because I want the privacy for him. I don't want people to recognize him and I want him to, you know, to have a happy childhood. That's why I don't understand. I really don't understand how famous people or even in Slovakia, and I'm not going to name them or other politicians, they're showing their kids like every part of the face, every part of the, the body. For me, this is very, very dumb. Yeah. Very dumb. Uh, I, and I think that... And, I and think that's you, exactly... You remember when your daughter, she didn't know and she, yeah, took, yeah. she took a video of yeah, us yeah. and you didn't see that Isaac yeah, is yeah. there and immediately I called you like, please yeah, yeah. Uh, put it down because I, right. Isaac is seen, you know. Yeah. And and uh, with me and my kids, I'm, I'm not a, a, um, as visible as you. Um, in, I'm fairly visible, but not a, uh, I'm not a celebrity. And certainly, I'm I, not as well. I, I certainly don't get my decolletage filmed when I go to vote, even though I'm not allowed to vote. Um, so no one judges me on, on my fashion mishaps, but uh, my family play a big part of who I am. And I, I, I grew up in a very happy environment and England and London was a very fun place to be as a child. Mm -hmm. And I find sometimes living in Slovakia as a foreigner, people forget this is not an easy place to live, yeah. even for a Slovak. My children are fully Slovak and Slova yeah. and and all of that. And, and I see that, you know, are they having the same amount of fun as I did as a mm -hmm. kid? You say joy, fun. Mm -hmm. For me, it's like I remember laughing a lot. Mm -hmm. I want them to also share that experience. And I'm not sure that's also always the case. It's a very serious country, Slovakia, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I find sometimes. Uh, maybe I'm hanging out with the wrong people. Um, no, no, I don't think so. But you live in Bratislava. If you go outside of the Bratislava, I think the kids are more happy outside of the Bratislava. There's still like a lot of like the village life. And I know because I, I travel around the Slovakia and I, and I can see the difference between Bratislava families and other families live, um, you know, not in Bratislava. But it's okay. like, again, it's up to the parents, you know, how, how they, they set it up. So I know your time is short. You have a Louboutin heel emergency that needs rectification. <laughs> that needs rectification. No, that, that'll get some nice likes. It'll get some views as well. It's okay. It's nice to look good. I'm a, I'm a big believer. I, same for my brand. I have to, I always have to look yeah, you're good. Yeah, always, you're always very chic. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, tick. Uh, uh, I, I know that you're you're busy. So we just had the the elections have just passed, and Slovakia is going into a new phase. Um, so on one hand, a lot of liberals are concerned that the new administration is going to take Slovakia into a into a different mindset, and then there are the old guard who are now back at the forefront of politics who are saying maybe that's the case. How do you see the future? How do you first? How do you see the future of Slovakia in the next? four years in this in this cycle and where do you want Slovakia to be you're very passionate about your country I can mm -hmm. see and where do you want it to be to be honest with you I really I really want Slovakia to keep up with the European Union mm -hmm. like if you look at the rank we are the second from the bottom so I really want to you know keep up with the biggest and strongest countries in European Union the way Slovakia is right now um uh, you saw the government before, it was all about chaos and non-stability. And I support this government. I know that they are not the best ones and I know their mistakes from the, from the past, but they were the stable, what we, what we can have. Mm -hmm. um, and they are not uh, the best option for Slovakia, but we don't have better alternative. I mean, I voted, <laughs> I, I voted against uh, Mr. Fico to going to jail. And I'm so glad that I did because I think if I wouldn't do it that time, right now, our country would rule progressive liberals and they are very dangerous for us, very dangerous people, very dangerous mindset, very dangerous political um, program. So for now, I just hope that Slovakia will be stable for four years and we will bring the best results and the best projects will be done, especially investments. Hopefully the best investments are yet to come to Slovakia. Good. So that's interesting. We'll talk about the investments. Uh, uh, progressive liberals, though, I, I don't really know 
uh, there, during the election cycle, there was this, this division. It's like progressive liberals that want to promote an agenda that gives minorities rights, which they should have. Exactly. Um, and then there are old fashioned non secular values that are part of the traditional fabric of Slovak history. So maybe one is too far yeah. this way yeah. and maybe the Absolutely. other one is too far that way. Yeah. And where we are is, losing the human where's the, humanity. Where's the center ground, right? I mean, what I want to know from you is that I, I, I sh I, I'm at an age where I don't care if someone wants to marry someone else and live together. I, I don't want to hear about it every day, but I'm very happy if they, if they want to get married, they should get married. Oh, that's your opinion, and yeah. I totally respect that. My opinion is uh, the Constitution of Slovakia Republic. The 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 number is forty one. It says that the marriage between the marriage is uh, about marriage between man and woman. And I really hope that this 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 way it will stay this way. If we want to change it in the constitutions, you have to vote. You need to find ninety votes in the parliament. And I think this will never happen. <laughs> I mean, I have nothing against L LGBTI community. Like I have so many friends. I love them. They are, they are amazing and You wouldn't want people. your friends to get married? If they want to get married, good for you, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna vote uh, for, for changing the law because for me, marriage is between men and women. I'm not married yet because I wasn't fortunate uh, enough, you know, uh, so far, but, but for example, my there's still friend, time, there's still time. Yeah, but my friend, he got married in LA and he's told me like, oh, this is my husband. Good for you. They broke up two months after and then he was like, oh, maybe I want another husband. You know, I think I'm kind of old school. For me, marriage is between man and woman. And if they want to get married in some other countries or, or whatever they want, I'm good for them. All, all love and respect to them. But in Slovakia, for me, marriage is between man and woman. Uh, divorce, well, let's be clear, is not exclusive to, uh, I mean, it's yeah, and when you think same about sex. It, and when you think about it, then so many people, they become homosexual after the marriage with a man or a woman. And then what we would say like, oh, this is my ex-wife and ex-husband. And, you know, then, then it's getting like too, just, just, just too much, you know, let's just. <laughs> Let's just take. Okay, so we're, we're respectfully we're going to agree to disagree here. Yeah. I, I'm I'm 46. I I believe that everybody should find happiness mm -hmm. simply. Yes, everybody should also respect the law. Yeah. Uh, if the law doesn't change, then that is that. That's the democracy that exactly. voted for the. Exactly. Yeah, you yeah. know, if if you want to change, like, don't hate me because of my opinion. I'm just the one politician. So vote for the others that they want to. And if the parliament, they will be like hundred politicians with this with this opinion. They will change the I law. I just think the language around it no. should be framed better. So we both have de dealt with a delicate subject here respectfully. Mm -hmm. We have different opinions and yes. we have, we've done it respectfully. Mm -hmm. I think in the public uh, in the public eye, it's not done respectfully. Exactly, exactly. I'd love but that. From, from both sides. Yeah, from both from sides. Both sides yeah, from both you sides. Know? Yeah. Like they're talking about respect, but they because don't Because it gets weaponized. Exa exactly, you yeah. know. If you just want to change it, vote for the other politicians and if they get the certain numbers in the problem, it can be changed and that's it. And and until then, if I see a gay or lesbian, like I'm just happy for you. I don't, I don't mind if they're holding hands, if they're kissing. I'm just happy for the love. That's exactly what the world needs now. Exactly. So less hate, much more love. And unfortunately, we'll, we'll find a lot more uh, hate. I hope that that changes. Well, Romana, uh, I've taken enough of your time. It's been an absolute pleasure and a joy to have you here, my first female guest. And oh, yes, and the last question before we sign off, my last question to you is female role models. Um, the president, who I'm a very big admirer of, and maybe you are not, but again, I can respect that as well. Uh, she has done wonders to put Slovakia on the map. We've had the athletes that have done it, uh, uh, the female athletes who I've mentioned already, but I think she's done. And I can tell you as a foreigner, I can see it. When I go to other countries, people refer to Slovakia through the president. So she's done uh, enough in that regard to help the brand Slovakia in an international sense. Mm -hmm. in, I totally agree. In terms of female role models, the thing I notice quite a lot here, especially and around the world, it's not just exclusive here, is that women are more hate-filled to women than men. Why? I don't know. It's it's the envy. It's the envy and the kind of the, the hate in them, you know. They just like to hate. Do you think people resent you because you're pretty and successful? Definitely. I think it's very irritating for people. But mm. the, the thing is that it's irritating for them that I don't care. And yeah. I'm like, if I, and I always say like, if I 
if I see a better and more beautiful and more successful woman than me, I'm like, wow, that's amazing. I want to be like her and better. You know, you have to, the worst, I think the uh, the mistake is that you don't admit that you envy, you know, there's for sure there are women that I'm like, wow, like she's amazing. But I admit it and I'm like, wow, I want to be like you. Like you look, you look amazing. Even now in Bratislava, I see somebody well dressed like, oh, you look amazing. And I think that's why I'm irritated for people. Yeah. So you know? I'm a big believer in women supporting women. I mean, as a man, it's not a, a domain that I know. I, I don't understand women at all. Yeah. Uh, I have nothing but women in my house and every day, kashti den horshye. Every day is bordel. Yeah. Um, but I, I guess I'm, I'm learning how to live with women as opposed to understanding yeah. women. I would like it to be a more inclusive environment. I see it in sports. It's very competitive and they're not, not nice to each other. Uh, and I wish that that will change in time. So on that note, Romana, I would like to thank you very much for joining me uh, on Undiplomatic, the podcast. This has been Romana Tabak, who is potentially uh, fitted for an important role at the newly formed Ministry of Sport and, and Tourism. And then I'm candidating to European, European Parliament, Parliament yes. as well in 2024. Yeah. Uh, can you be both at the same time? I mean, if I, if I will become a, a MEP, mm -hmm. I, will, I will probably... Uh, uh, resigned uh, at the at the ministry. Yeah. We will see. I'm, yeah. I'm going to decide. Brussels yeah. is not my favorite city. In oh, it's so boring. So, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's so it boring. It will be hard. But you are there Absolutely. for a reason yeah. for the work. So, yeah. yeah. But you asked me about the role model. Um, there are so many women's role models. But um, just just quickly, it is in my mind. I love Sarah Jessica Parker. Mm -hmm. She's an amazing woman. And then there is one more woman. It's a Harriet. The surname I forgot, but um, she already died. She was um. Uh, um, black uh, women who helped so many slaves to save their lives in Alabama back then and she was like helping them going through the tunnel and uh, that's I want to say Harriet Harman but that could be wrong no so. her name is Harriet and she was a really simple woman and she was just there you know I love um, passion and people like women with a with big heart it's very very important yeah. And what a lovely note to finish that on a yeah. positive yeah, and, and uplifting note. Romana, thank you very much for joining me on Diplomatic. It's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you. And if you take the role uh, that is designed for you in the coming months, please make a promise to me here now on my podcast that you will help improve the sports uh, uh, infrastructure and pathway and grassroots sport for children in this country because it's needed. Yes. Make that promise. Yes, I promise. I promise. Thank you very you much. Have my word. Thank you. You're very kind blessings thank you. thank you you have been listening to the undiplomatic podcast brought to you by Zulfayat Khan 